All right, let's get to it. All right, guys, so this is uh, the next step. You guys should have all of your edges fully burnished along the whole strap of your belt. Now we're gonna talk about uh, sharpening up a block plane. And I know that sounds like we're kind of switching gears entirely, but it's for a specific purpose. What we're gonna do next is we're going to thin down, or in leather work terms, we call that skiving. We're gonna thin down the part of the belt that's gonna get folded over the buckle. Because right now this is super thick and it doesn't fold down really flat and it's way too bulky. So what we want is, I've already done this on my, on my demo one here for you guys. Uh, I've taken a block plane, just thin this down so that it's about two thirds the thickness of the original leather or somewhere thereabouts. You guys are gonna get the feel for kind of what makes sense when you fold that over. Um, you know, it's gonna sort of make sense to you if, it start, if it's still too bulky or if it doesn't fold tight enough, that kind of thing. But that's the idea. So we're gonna skive this down, thin the leather out so that we can fold it where the buckle goes. So we're gonna fill up our tank here with water. And if, it's, if you're just starting it out, um, this, this grinding stone is gonna absorb a lot of water. So you're gonna to have to have some water nearby. You can continue to add water to it as needed. There's a little knob on the front side of the machine here where you can crank up the water trough. Uh -oh. Whoops. Yeah, that's, so if, if water leaks out, that just means it's, it's got enough water. Uh, and that's why we're actually gonna set this up on the steel workbench for the most part, if you guys can help me out with that. You can kind of rock this back and forth with your fingers a little bit and feel where the blade touches that fence all the way along. And We're gonna snug that down. And this bar underneath here, this clamping bar should be nice and parallel to squeeze the blade equally. And we're gonna slip it on top of our jig here. And we're gonna crank this, we're gonna crank this down. We're gonna lower this bar until, probably about there. You'd want it just before the blade guide mount here. You don't want it touching the stone, but kind of just close. Okay, and then we can just snug these guys up. That's a good spot. And what we want to see right in this spot right here, if you look at this way, you'll want to see that the blade is sitting flat on the sharpening stone. That's ultimately what we want. Flat, or the, the bevel of the blade is sitting right flat on the grinding stone. Okay, just make that nice and black like that, just with this fancy little felt marker that it comes with. Kind of go about 10 seconds or something like that, and then have a look. You guys can see, you can see the shiny spot there where we've ground off all of our ink marker. That kind of gets us a good indication of where we're sharpening. And I want to grind this until basically all of the black is gone. Let's have a look. We're getting there. And actually this is probably all we need to go. There is still some black up near the top, but the whole edge along our cutting edge has all been ground nice and evenly. And actually that's uh, where I'm going to stop. So you can just take your paper towel and wipe that off. And by the way, guys, when you're wiping this off, this is already now really sharp. Make sure you're always kind of, you know, you can pinch the blade and wipe away from it. Now we're gonna use the leather strop side. So we're gonna pop this bar out, stick it in the other side. The blade can stay inside the jig. You don't have to move it but you guys will find that you will have to, uh, you will have to crank this in right there. Now on this side, what you want is actually to have the angle of the blade just ever so slightly uh, more focused on the cutting edge, not the entire bevel, 
but just more so the cutting edge, just slightly. We're going to take a little bit of this honing paste, just a tiny little bit. Uh, and actually, you don't often need to do this, but because it's still a pretty new machine, this is still saturating into the leather. So we're going to do that. Turn it on. And an important thing to notice is that before the wheel was turning, the grindstone was turning into the blade. Now the leather wheel is turning out of the blade or away from the blade. That's important. You always want the leather wheel turning away from the blade. Okay, and just a, a decent amount of pressure back and forth. And let's have a look. We've got a little bit of honing compound. Just let that back into the wheel. See the light coming off that? It's all nice and shiny right along that whole beveled edge, or specifically right along the cutting edge there. Um, that's it. We're done. Okay. So we can pull this out of the jig. We're done with the sharpener. What we want to do now is before we leave this thing, we want to take this knob, we want to lower the water down so that the wheel is not sitting in the water all the time. Otherwise the filings that came off this will rust and they'll kind of sit into the wheel. So just drop the, drop the tray and that's it. Now let's have a look at this blade. So how do we test to see if this is sharp enough? or not. Well, what I usually do is I'll take this on my fingernail and uh, always away from your finger, but I just want to attack my thumbnail at a really low angle and just check and it should feel like it wants to just stick on my nail and it does. It wants to kind of dig and grab in. If it slides off, it's not sharp enough. Okay, so this is, this is looking good. Okay, so we're going to put our plain iron back together. Again, uh, if you guys aren't sure how to do this, there's a couple of tips on putting a plain iron back together and how to use it in my video under woodshop skills. So you guys can have a look at that. And we're ready to go ahead and skive this strap. This is just a short one. I'm just gonna show you as an example. So we're gonna be skiving on the back side or the rough side or the flush side of the belt. And we're just gonna Hold the block plane real tight with, with one hand, hold your belt tight with the other hand, and you can run that. Now, this is kind of a good place to get set up. We got a bunch of leather dust, more or less. We wanna actually take a little bit deeper cut. So you're gonna take the adjustment on your block plane and just crank it clockwise, just a tiny little bit. So we're shooting for about eight inches or so. There we go. And look what a nice, sharp, sharp block plane will do for you. We're just taking off, that's like fruit leather. And this is just really the nicest, easiest way I've found to skive this. Uh, if you want to take off a little thicker, maybe we'll go a touch more. Okay, just taking off nice even ribbons. And let's check it, because we don't want to go too far. All right, so we want to kind of have this taper down. And let's check it, because we're going to do this fold over situation, right? So our buckle's going to go in here, and we're going to fold over three inches of this. It's still fairly thick, and I can't quite get it to, so we maybe want to take off a touch more. I'm going to show you another way here too. If you're doing this at home and you don't have a fancy block plane like we have in the shop here, you might have a chisel. And so you could do this with a chisel too. Again, it's got to be super sharp. Uh, and we're going to use the chisel upside down and you'll kind of get a feel for what angle works. Nicely tapered out. I think that's where I want to be, right there. So I can fold that over. Now that's not too bulky. That's where my belt is. My belt uh, buckle is going to go in there.